Welcome back to part two of making the dots on a grid pillow covers. In this part, we're going to sew the grid and the dots onto the background, and then we're going to do a little stitching near the ditch so that we enclose all of our rough edges so that this texture isn't ruined by any loosening threads. Um, I hope you'll join me and I will see you at the end. Okay, we're back. So um, we are working on the pillowcase again. I have all of my pieces turned inside out, or right side out. I've got all of my inner circles turned right side out, and I have my layout. So um, this is how I wanna sew them, and I'm gonna sew the rows together first. So I'll sew each one of these rows, and then I'll sew the rows to one another. My dots I'm going to leave to the side until I'm ready to put on the backing. So I'm just going to set those up there and I'll meet you at the other camera and we will sew the rows together. pairs. two and if you can see over here they're all in a row right I'm gonna go ahead and snip this beginning string and because they're all in a row I know what goes where still but I want to make sure that when I open these up that I sew the correct edges together so I'm gonna put a pin there And a pin here. I'm doing every other one, putting a pin on the right hand side for these first few. And then I'll put a pin on the left hand side so I keep my orientation correct as I'm taking these off of my little strips here. And put a pin right here, just so I can keep myself together. And I'm just gonna cut the first two away. And keep my orientation correct because my pins. So I'm just gonna put a single pin in there. And I'm gonna put that one on my machine, that's my top row. Cut this off. The correct parts together. Put a single pin in there. And I'm gonna leave this over here so I know that it's my second row. So come back to the machine. This is how I have my setup. Take my pin out. I'm gonna sew those two two-part sections together. Make sure I keep my sides lined up. I'm gonna take my next two. Get that started. 
make sure I'm lined up here. Then we're going to cut all of these off and we're going to iron them. All right. Perfect. This is my top row. Second row. My third row. I'm going to leave the fourth one on there. I just like to chain piece. It uh, helps me out. So what I want to do with my iron is I want to iron this first row. I'll be sewing here. These seams to the left. The second row seams to the right. So when I flip this on top, I can nest my seams and the sewing machine will help to push the bulk of this seam into the bulk of this seam and give me really nice tight intersections. So these are gonna go to the left. And I'm going to put a little tension on there to open up the seam since I'm uh, pressing from the back side. These are going to go to the right. Just a little bit of tension to make sure those seams are fully open. Give it another press from the front. Give this another press from the front. Careful to catch your iron inside those holes. The third row is going to go to the left. And then when we take the fourth row off, it will go to the right. Give this a little press this way. All right, it's looking good, looking good. Steam, I like the steam. All right, so we're gonna put the number one row on top of the number two row. And we're going to make sure that the seams are right next to each other. I'm only worried about this first set right now because I'll adjust these as I go. And I don't need any pins for this because the seams are going to be pressed together by the presser foot. So I don't need to pin it. So I'm ready to go to the machine. And this is thick. You're sewing through four layers here. So take your time. When you get to the intersection, you're going to be sewing through eight layers. So as soon as I get that first intersection, I'm going to line up my second intersection there, and then I'll continue sewing. Okay, there's my second nested set of nested seams. And here's my fourth. And I do want to make sure that's right next to each other. Maintaining my quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to line up this last little piece right here. And I did not do a great job of squaring that bottom piece up. So I'm just going to split the middle here. All right. 
So that's my first two rows sewn together. I'm going to take my fourth row off. Lay it out. Which is this way. These seams are going to go to the right. Flip it over, let's move this up a little bit. And get them nice and pressed to the right on row number four. Then after everything is where you want it, give it a little steam, a little steam. And now we're gonna to press together these two rows the way we did the other two rows. I'm gonna flip number three on top of number four, nest the seams for the first uh, set of nested seams, and I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew these together the same way we did the top two rows. there so you may need to give it a little bit of an assist to get started. All right and we're going to take these off the machine. So we've got our second two rows and our first two rows and we just use the thread cutter to separate these. We'll go to the iron. So I'm going to set my seams first, give it a little bit of ironing. Then I'm going to press these seams open, which means I'm going to press them in one direction first, and then I'll go to the back side and press them open. And that's to reduce some of the bulk because now we're going to have four layers of fabric here eight layers of fabric here and like 16 in the thickest spot and we don't want that so we're going to flip it over and then we're going to open this up so now we're back to four and eight at the intersections okay if you want to press your seams open between um, your circles you can do that but i like to use it to nest the seams and give me really tight intersections, which when I flip this back over, I'll show you. Right. So when I flip this back over, look at how tight these intersections are. That one overlapped a little bit. That one's just about perfect. And so is that one. All right. So those are our bottom two rows. I'm gonna Move this up, and I'll do the same thing with our top two rows. I'm gonna first set the seam with a little heat and steam. This kind of relaxes those threads and pushes them down into the fabric. And I'm gonna use my fingers to open this up while it's nice and warm. It's more pliable that way. Give this a press from the top with all of my seams going one direction. Look at how nice these intersections are. They look really good. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to open up these seams. Because you just have a lot of bulk in there. This is the top row. All right, so now we have 
our two pairs together and we're gonna sew these together now. So I'm just going to flip the top two rows on top of the bottom two rows. And there are a couple ways that to approach this. So now our seams are going in the opposite direction, which means when the presser foot hits this bulk, it's gonna wanna push it away from the other seam. So you won't get as nice a seams, uh, you know, across as you did in these sections here because of the way the seams are pressed, which is down, it's a lot of bulk. So one thing that you can do is to pin at your intersections. You wanna get them very tight together. And I like to pin just a little bit to the right of the intersection, um, sorry, to the left of the intersection so that everything stays lined up before the intersection. And there's nothing to push out of place once I get to the intersection. Or what's normally done is you put your pin right in the intersection, right on the, the stitch line, because it's a place that you can feel that it's not gonna get pushed out of whack, but I still manage to push it out of whack. The other thing you can do, which is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to sew with the bulk of my fabric in the neck of the sewing machine so that my seams are up. And I'm gonna eyeball a quarter inch. Um, that's another thing that you can do when you don't have a lot of fabric on the right hand side. And I just like the way that the seams come together when they're pushed by the foot together. So I'm, I'm gonna leave this pin in, but I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine like it is, and I'm gonna sew with the foot here and this in the throat of my machine. So here we go. So on my presser foot, this is an eighth of an inch. So the thing that I want to do is I want to kind of double that amount of space to get my quarter inch seam allowance. You got a lot of fabric here, remember it's bulky, so you might want to use a charger or something to get yourself started. So I feel this intersection coming up, feels like it's nested well. I'm not worried about this little folded over part. It'll be fine. Because remember, it's two layers. It's really only the second layer that's doing that. All right. So you don't want to sew over your pins, creep up, pull it out before your needle gets to it, and then continue sewing. All right. So let's open this up and see how it looks. So I'm going to give this a press again on the new seam and the moment of truth let's open this up using our fingers while it's hot and look at how tight that is look at how tight that is lovely give it a little press and we're going to turn it over and open up this seam trim on this little string here, this excess threads. So I'm going to open up the seam. It is easier when it's warm. To get these to lay down. Because they're all like blacks, like they just got out of the jacuzzi. <laughs> steam. All right. Slip this over and iron it from the front. Okay. 
So there we have the first part, the first front part of our pillow. Our next step is our backing fabric. So we've got the fronts of our pillow covers finished. In the next video, we're gonna square it up and put the whole pillow cover together, including assembling the envelope closure uh, like this on the back. Um, if all you want to learn is how to put a pillow together using your own block or your own fabrics, then you can skip right to that third one. Uh, if you need to review how we got to this point, go to the first video and learn how we made the blocks for this, the front of this pillow cover. I look forward to seeing you in the third video.